So I'm going to chat now to Francisco Gonzalez. If you're into your adventure games, you've probably heard of him before. He made the excellent Lamplight City, lots of other games as well. And he's got another one coming up called Rosewater, a Western point-and-click adventure game. Very excited. I, I got to, a very privileged, I have to say, I got to play a bit of this, I previewed a bit of this, act one of it. And now he's going to tell me a lot more about it and, and everyone here. Welcome, Francisco. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm well. How are you? I'm very good. Right. That's the niceties out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we can just insult each other. Yeah, tell great. me how much you hated. Tell me how much you hated Rosewater. Go I on, know. I can take it. Okay, this is what I. <laughs> this is something I want to get get out of the way. How has it been making this? Because it sounds like you know you've been making this for a while now. Are, are you kind of you're not sure how people are going to react to this, or 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 what? What are your thoughts about it? You you sound a bit nervous about it, and I don't think you should be. Yeah, well, that's very kind of you to say. I am nervous about it because I mean obviously with every game you make every game i make personally i'm always kind of like oh how are people gonna gonna react to this but i also tend to have the advantage of having been able to take it to like shows and stuff and i haven't had much of that during the past three years because of covid so actually the first time that i ever got face to face uh interaction with people as they played the demo for rosewater was at adventure x 2022 so i've basically been working on this game in isolation without any real external feedback with the exception of sending builds to people here and there just to test certain sequences to see if they're well balanced and stuff um but i haven't had the i haven't had that player that constant player feedback of like taking it to local shows and things like that so so I guess that sort of uncertainty and self-doubt has just amplified because of that. But at the same time, I don't think it's a bad game. Like I've also I've, I've said, like, this is the first game I've made in a long time where I don't feel like there's anything about it that will give people pause. Like I know Lamplight City, you know, the whole no inventory thing was kind of a divisive thing. And with a golden wake, like, you know, it's a game about a real estate agent. So it's not exactly the most... Uh, uh you know oh yeah i want to play that kind of thing <laughs> um so so i yeah i don't i mean i i still maintain i could be completely wrong about this but i feel like you know rosewater is more in the vein of just like a traditional adventure adventure like indiana jones and the fate of atlantis and i guess the only thing i, I that could maybe be a, not in its favor is the fact that it's a western and that's not exactly like the a super popular genre but then again red dead 2 did well and red dead 1 did well famously and, yes know. yeah and there there really haven't been any dramatic point and click westerns so i feel like there's there's a niche there that i can fill anyway i so, guess so yeah yeah i mean like give for we'll obviously go into parts of it but i, I guess for people maybe just even hearing about this give us a little kind of talk up of, of the game or a, a little sort of summary of what it is it obviously it's a, it's a western point and click sure. adventure but yeah yes yeah so so rosewater is a western point and click adventure it's set in an in the alternate uh 19th century world that i created with lamplight city which is uh instead of the united states of america it's the commonwealth of vespuccia it's uh sort of uh the u.s didn't declare independence and there's steampunk and weird th etheric etheric uh power in the atmosphere that's sort of what sets this world apart so it's basically a story about um a woman who is a former uh bare knuckle boxer who comes out west and she comes to the town of rosewater with the intent of becoming a writer or realizing her dream of becoming a writer and so she gets assigned <clears throat> excuse me she gets assigned this puff piece to interview this this legend of the west guy named gentleman jake who's in town doing his show. And after the show, Jake's like, hey, uh, so I'm putting together this uh, crew to go look for this missing man's fortune, and that might make a better story. What do you think? And and our main character, Harley, is like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. I'll come along. You know, a treasure sounds nice, but the story sounds good. So she then gets involved in this treasure hunt, and they they meet a couple more companions that join the posse along the way. And uh, yeah, this, the story is basically their journey across the frontier as they go in search of this, uh, of this treasure. 
and hijinks ensue. Now, you talked about Lamplight City. Obviously, I, I mentioned it as well and how it is set in, in the same world. So what, what was the idea behind that? It's Because it's not, it's not a follow-up, really. Some people are sort of calling it like a sequel, but it's not because obviously you're not playing as the same characters, but it's just it's set within the same world. Is that right? Yeah. I, it's like, I guess the word is side cool <laughs> in that it's set <laughs> in the same world, but it's a side story. Um, yeah, it, it's, it basically came about from when I was designing Lamplight City, you know, I went through the, well, not went through the trouble, but I, <laughs> I put in the work to create this whole like alternate world thing. And I thought it would be a waste not to explore more of it. And so it seemed like the perfect antithesis of the, of the sort of, you know, claustrophobic, uh, urban, dark detective adventure was a bright open space frontier old west so i thought oh well let's exp let's see what the old west looks like in this world and i think it's important to note though if you haven't played it you, you if you haven't played lamplight city you can still play rosewater there's lots of kind of explanations yeah. as you go through people you know not it's not put on too heavy but it's just you know you don't have to i mean you should play it because it's very good but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but thanks. yeah 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 you don't You'll get you'll get all the references and stuff if you played Lamplight City, but it's not required to to understand what's going on in Rosewater. So, I mean, let's talk a bit about the the main character Harley and sort of how she came about, and I, I guess just what kind of things you can do with her because you know she's got quite a few skills, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah. So Harley is actually uh, the sister of Bill, who is the dead partner from Lamplight City. Um, and, uh, there's, there's reference to her at the very beginning in Lamplight City when Bill talks about like, oh, going to visit Harley out West or whatever. So, so I had this idea of like Harley, I, I, just, I think I just came up with the name as I was doing Lamplight, Lamplight City and I thought, oh, Harley Legere, that's a cool name. So anyway, Harley, yeah, she, um, she grew up rough. Her story is that she grew up rough. She was the older sister. So she and Bill were orphaned and she had to take care of Bill. And so she kind of left the city when, when he was of age and Bill went into the police force. So she was like, okay, well, he can take care of himself. So she's sort of been bouncing around across the country. And now is that she's trying to settle down and, and you know, be a writer. Because she's, she's middle-aged, you know. She's, she had her, her fun and as a boxer, but now she's like, I got to do something for real now. So yeah, that so that that's the cool thing about it because I did want to lean into um, figuring out like multiple solutions for different puzzles, and so one of the solutions is you can be violent and you can punch people mm. or you can do a more violent thing, and that is in line with her character because as we all know, it's very dissonant when an adventure game character who's supposed to be like this paragon of virtue suddenly like poisons a homeless person to take their <laughs> coins <laughs> <laughs> and that does so, happen a lot yeah it does it does so so i figured it would be interesting to kind of explore and and i guess in a sense give the player a bit of a an, an element of role playing because you can play harley as just like a, a punchy thug or you can sort of aid in her like I don't want to say redemption arc because she's not really, she's not a bad person, mm. but you can aid in her like turning over a new leaf and like being more methodical and, and logical and, you know, that sort of thing. So, and yeah. And I think one thing I found playing through it is it, that didn't seem to, it didn't seem too weird if you went with one choice. If there wasn't like a kind of dissonance thinking, Oh, it's kind of weird that you know this would be an option because, like you say, she's not, she's not an out and out thug, but she, you know, she right. she has dabbled in the past maybe, and so she, you know, she she comes across uh, this con artist a couple of times who's a bit useless, yeah. um, and <laughs> you know, there's one you you could just you could bribe him, you can punch him, and all of those ways kind of seem to make sense with the character. I don't know how difficult that was to make sure it still stay true to it even though you've got all these different choices yeah one of my favorite interactions with with that character in particular is, and i don't want to spoil too much but there's a if you if you like go along with his scheme the first time 
there's a potential there's a possibility to meet him again later like towards the end of the act i don't know if you encountered yes, him again. i did yeah, yeah i did yeah right so there's an option again like you can you can pay him to get what you need you can punch him out at that point or you can like you have a chance to like persuade him and if you're successful she kind of like sets him on the straight and narrow and she's like don't be like me kid like you're <laughs> you know, and she's like, go home and read some books. You'll thank me later. And I love that little interaction between See, I just went for the punching option there. But... Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know, that's a perfectly valid option. You know? Okay, good. I'm, I'm glad to. Yeah, like that was one of the things too. Because with Lamplight City, obviously it was possible to get cases wrong. Yeah. But there's there was the possibility of like locking yourself out of the content. And I didn't want to do that again because that, understandably is a is is something that players don't like so i i wanted to make every choice feel like it was a valid choice and like you weren't missing something or you weren't being punished for for doing something like you know and i mean you can save so that's what i was doing quite a lot with the preview well, i was like yeah. i was sort of saving and being like okay what happens if i did this though let's just see because <laughs> i was just interested in finding out um i mean what other i mean obviously the setting we've talked about in in terms of like differences from from like lamplight city but what other things i suppose inventory is is quite a big thing mm -hmm. that's that's different let's talk about that yeah so so this game has inventory but i also you know i've been thinking about a lot lately about feedback in adventure games and specifically negative feedback in adventure games and you know one of the one of the more frustrating things as a designer is when people get to the point where it's like well i don't know what to do so i'm just going to use every item on every item and hope that something happens so in order to kind of minimize that um i i took a page out of the longest journeys book and i i made it so that inventory items only highlight over hotspots that require an inventory item to proceed yeah so for example if there's a locked door and it needs a key or you can use a crowbar or something to pry it open if you hover an inventory item over it then it'll highlight and you know that you can use an inventory item there so it's not like you just can click every item on every hotspot and get a i can't do that message. yeah and which also and i also, guess helps with the voice acting you don't have to keep having well yeah there's that too but like, yeah, so, you know, and also if it's a specific hotspot that requires an inventory item, even if you use the incorrect item on it, you can write like a custom yeah. message like that won't get the door open. So at least it it hints as to what your intent is. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, let's talk a bit about the voice cast because you've got an amazing yeah. voice cast for this. I, I, I mean, go yeah. through some of the, the ones that you're that, that there's so many. Um, well, yeah, but that's yeah. the thing. I'm I'm super excited about the voice cast, and I think they all did a great job. And like, yeah. I I went on the adventure game podcast with Shorsha to like yeah. do a cast reveal and everything, and that was real cool. But I'm a huge voiceover nerd, so I'm the type of person that's like, I know exactly who these people are, and I understand that a lot of people don't. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I was extremely lucky to get uh, Roger Clark, who's the voice of Arthur Morgan in Red Dead Redemption Two, Cam Clark who has so many credits that I can't even begin to list them, but he's the original voice of Leonardo on the Ninja Turtles cartoon. He's Liquid Snake. He's basically, you've heard him in something yeah. if you've watched a cartoon or played a video game in the last 30 years. Um, I've got, who else? Uh, if you played Telltale's The Walking Dead season one, I was gonna bring I've got up. the voice of Lee, Kenny, and Katya. That would be Dave Fenoy, Gavin Hammond, and Sissy Jones. Sissy Jones was also Delilah in Firewatch. Um, who else? Lots of people. I've got, I've got, I've got the guy who played Salvador in Grim Fandango. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sal Lopez. He's in there, and I didn't actually realize that until after I had cast him, and I was like, oh, he was in Grim Fandango. That's cool. Um, I've got Neil Ross, who was Wally in the Monkey Island games and the narrator in Leisure Suit Larry and Freddie Farkas. Uh, I got, and he was also like in Transformers and G.I. Joe back in the day. Same with Bill Ratner, who was also, he was Flint in G.I. Joe. He was also the narrator in King's Quest VI. So Alexander feels a strange pulling <laughs> sensation. Um, that's him. You know, I had to resist the urge to ask him to record like I a bet. custom dirty version of that. <laughs> but he probably wouldn't have remembered anyway. So 
so yeah, so he's the narrator in King's Quest Six. Uh, Ivy Dupler, Whispers of a Machine. Ivy Dupler, who's in Whispers of a Machine, uh, and many other games, including Lamplight City um, and Unavowed. Ben Britton, who played Miles in Lamplight City, he's back. Uh, Amelia Tyler who is the narrator in Baldur's Gate 3, and she's been in a ton of other things. And I'm forgetting other people. Oh, Matt Yang King, who is Carrie Uridine in Cyberpunk 2077, and many other things. Yeah, so, oh, Leilani Jones-Wilmore, who was the voodoo lady in Monkey Island, and, and Molly Getty in Gabriel Knight. I got a lot of cool people. <laughs> I Yeah, like, I want to ask you a little bit about that. How did you get these people? <laughs> How did I paid this happen? Them money. I paid them money. Ah. That's the short answer. <laughs> yes. Actually, actually, I'm giving a talk about this very thing ah. in two weeks at Nariscope. And oh, that'll amazing. be live streamed. Yeah, that'll be live streamed. It's June 11th. Uh, so mark your calendars for Nariscope. But yeah, long story short, basically, I learned that there is uh, SAG AFTRA, which is the the uh, actors union here in the US has a uh, they recently established a low budget interactive agreement, which basically sets a fairly reasonable scale amount to pay per session. And so I did the math. I asked my publisher for a little budget increase and I realized, yeah, hey, I can do this. And basically it was because COVID happened and mm -hmm. everybody needed a home studio. So taking out the, the the cost of renting a studio made a huge difference. And so being able to work remotely with actors um, and like, you know, I had this thing in my head, like, well, that's cool and all, but who's going to say yes. But it turns out that most voice, voice actors just like working and there's no <laughs> like, I'm too good for this project. I mean, there's a few people like that, let's be honest. But like all the people that I reached out to, like everybody was super nice. And yeah, so I still can't believe I did it. Like I'm, I'm still pinch myself, but yeah, it was really cool. Um, Nikki in the chat has a good question saying, did you write any of the characters with uh, actors in mind? I did. Um, so the guy that we met that you meet ver at the beginning, the said con artist, Jem, I wrote him with Andy Manjuk in mind, but that's, that was that was safety because like Andy's a friend and I know that he, he would have you know, like, I knew he was going to be in. So it wasn't like, Oh, maybe I can get this person. But then, um, some characters. Yeah. I didn't, I, I'm trying to think, I guess characters that I had already established and I had already written dialogue for, I guess later on in the process when I kind of had a, an idea of who I wanted, I wrote them. I wrote like extra dialogue that was that, still remain with their voices like a right. couple of the characters that dave finoy plays because dave finoy has a very very distinct voice so i was yeah. like yeah i can hear dave finoy playing this um same with leilani jones who plays who plays lola johnson who's one of your companions i was like i know what kind of voice i want her to have and i i'm just imagining this voice so yeah so getting getting her was extra bonus <laughs> And I guess, yeah, from from what I, I played through, it definitely, you know, adds just an extra level to it. Because as you say, you are interacting a, a lot. There's a there's a big cast and you've got these yeah. five sort of companions that you're having to talk quite a lot to. Yeah, and the tricky thing too is that, especially in Act 2, which is after what you played, yeah. there's scenes that um are dependent on your relationships with the companions so there's certain characters you won't meet in one playthrough because you have okay. scenario b instead of scenario a for example so yeah that, that's also there's a lot of content but it's not all you're not going to see it all in one playthrough basically so that's also why it's taken so long and why it's so big and are you going to be able to maybe i suppose you i was yeah, you can just save at certain points and go back to certain points and change that, I guess. Or w will it be yeah, well, would it more advised to begin at the beginning and, and go through it all again? And um, well, I guess it depends. What I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to because so the the second act is divided. It, the second act is basically the journey. Like, like they leave Rosewater and they yeah. go to where they're going. So the the act act two is basically just their travel across the frontier, and it's made up of vignettes excursions and main scenes 
And the vignettes are, there's six of them, but you only see four in a playthrough. And are they, and they are completely com random or? They're completely randomized. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a new game plus mode where when you start a new game, I, I, I haven't quite decided yet, but I might do both. But my plan was to have a new game plus mode where if, if it knows that you've already completed the game, it'll ask you if you want to see the ones you missed or if you want to just completely randomize them again. Okay. Or what okay. I also might do is in like the bonus menu, I might just do like a quick skip to them just so you can play them if you don't feel like playing through the whole game again. I think that um, would be good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but the I, I as far as <laughs> yeah, but the uh, I might be mean and make it so you only get an achievement if you actually legitimately like play them or something. I don't know, whatever. But the um, yeah, the companion excursions you have a little bit more control over those because it's you know if you want to be nice to a companion, you'll get your. There's two possible ones for each. There's like high relationship and lower relationship ones. So that's more in your control. And the main scenes are always the same. They just have different approaches to get through them so are you able to sort of see in any way how characters are thinking about you or is it just in maybe how they respond to you that you can get an idea of like your relationship yeah, at the moment it's mostly in how they respond to mm. you like like one of the companions phil you have a few opportunities to make jokes to him and if he likes you he'll laugh at your jokes and if he doesn't <laughs> like you he'll be like was that supposed to be a joke <laughs> sort of thing <laughs> So yeah, you get you get kind of an idea of like how they respond to you in certain situations of how you're doing with them. Importantly, so. Francisco, can you flirt with any of them? You cannot. There is no romance. <laughs> There's no direct romance. There might be romance between some of them independent of you. Okay. And whether you you get to see that or not also depends on like how well you know them. But Harley herself does not have any active romances or okay. flirting with any of them. It's important. You know, I'm there's sorry. still time to put that in, Francisco. Just <laughs> there's already like twenty thousand lines of No, I know. I'm joking. Game. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm joking. And I, I, I think that kind of makes sense with the character as well. She's very kind of. I don't know. She 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 keeps herself to herself a little bit. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't I don't want to like pull a uh like you know afterthought thing. Yeah. But I don't know. I kind of I kind of figured Harley's not no. not really. That's not really part of something she's into. So. Um, <laughs> one thing I I mean, talking about these kind of the 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 five companions and getting making relationships with them and and friendships with them. It, that's going to would would that even affect endings as as well as just how they react to you or is that more just how how everyone gets on with each other? It's it's how they all get on get on with each other. It mm. it basically affects you know which excursions you get through the second act, and it also affects the configuration of the group at the end of the second act. So the third act, the main puzzle, well, one of the the main puzzles at the beginning, there's three ways to you, you have to get into this place and one of your comp you can choose one of your companions plans to get in okay um, so who's with you depend it's kind of like uh, i compare it to the walking dead season one like at the end of episode four like you can have everybody with you you can have kenny with you you can have uh omid and krista for example based on your your uh stuff your relationships with them so it's kind of the same thing. Um, and yeah, so basically there's a few puzzles in the third act that you have to use the assistance of one of your companions to solve. And so that affects that. And as far as the endings, I, there's no... Like I did the thing where, you know, she's a Harley's a writer, so at the very end, like she writes down what happens to right. everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so there's variety in that, but it's not it's not drastically different. Like I didn't want it to be so drastically different that it was like, oh, this is a completely different ending. It's it's kind of like it's it's if it was a graph, it starts off like this, it goes like this, and right. then it goes back to this. But Got then you. it's sort of it's slightly different at the end. Which I think so. is nice actually because it's nice to kind of feel that you're you know, you, you've got a, a, a sort of point that you're arriving at, but it's just like you said, it's there's different kind of roads you travel along the way to get yeah. there. I feel it's like the, the most important thing is the reactivity along the way. Like I've made a real focus to be as reactive as possible in this. Like 
you know, even to the point where it's like you if you make an offhand comment to one of the characters about like their cooking being good and that if they opened a restaurant, you'd be their first customer. Like one of the characters actually ends up opening a restaurant at the uh, end. That's like, cool. If, only if you made that comment. So, yeah, it's like little things like that 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 I like putting in because there's a lot of smoke and mirrors in 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 this sort of thing. And as a solo dev, it's really hard to like do it in a in a like you can't plan for every every possibility so it's like you're not going to make this huge epic sprawling thing if these triple a companies have a hard enough time doing it so there's there's certain little things that you can do to make it feel more reactive than it maybe actually is so uh i'm leaning it. Well, yeah, no, but it sounds, and, and Duke of Germany in the chat also has a, a question about this. Mm. How do you keep track of all the possibilities within the story? Um, with uh, difficulty, I guess, <laughs> is the answer. But... Yeah. yeah, I mean, I basically just did a very extensive outline of every single, I guess the most, the the biggest set of, of variants is all the stuff in Act 2. So I basically just kept an outline of all the possible outcomes and and you know which characters would react to certain things because there's a whole bunch of things like you know dialogue options that affect your characters i have two variant I have, or sorry two variables there's like and there's respect and they get added together and averaged into your total relationship so certain choices and actions will affect the character's like or respect towards you so that's okay, been interesting. That's interesting. So, in terms of, so what would be, I guess, what where's the the difference in that? What would an action? How would an action get respect rather than like? If that, or would they get so, both? So, for example, Jake, who's like the big talking Western hero guy, like if you do something where you're like also bragging, he'll he'll like he'll like you more. But if you call him out and he likes you then he'll respect you for like standing up to him ah. same thing for like you know yeah we'd made it very we my partner and i who who helped me write this we made a very extensive list of like characters uh qualities and like what will make them like or dislike you and what will make them respect you or not respect you so like you know one of the companions uh if you do something that or you that's like I don't well you don't you can't actively do anything well actually no you can there's one puzzle where you have to deal with an animal and you can either scare it away or you can like throw a rock at it so like if you throw the rock at it and you tell her she's like oh no and she <laughs> respects you less right yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that sort of thing so, could you have a yeah. could you have a high like but a low respect <laughs> uh i yeah i think in some situations okay. you can um yeah <laughs> I don't know. We've, we've we've had to we did we still have to like fine tune that a little yeah. bit, but yeah, but yeah, no, it's possible to do that. The main thing too was that like yeah, there's the relationship meter, but my goal wasn't like it's impossible to have the companions hate you. Like you can't be a complete <laughs> dick to them because <laughs> because like that's it's tempting, but at the mm. same time, I know nobody's gonna do that. Or if they do that, it'll be on their second playthrough. Yeah, yeah, or, or whatever. Because it's like my goal is. And in a way, it gives you a little bit more leeway, too, because it's like when you write a story that has a bunch of different characters, you as the writer want the player to like them all. Mm. But obviously, that's impossible because there's always going to be a fan favorite or there's always going to be one that everyone hates or whatever. So that's kind of it gives me a little bit more flexibility of giving you the option to choose who you like. And so, yeah. Who's your favorite character in it? That's hard because it changes <laughs> all the time. I really, I, I like Danny a lot, but I'm really starting to really like Phil a lot <laughs> because mostly because of the voice acting. Yeah, because when the, with the way that the the way that they've been brought to life is, it's it's just given them new. And I, I mean, I like them all. I like them all. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's something about all of them that I like, and they all have a very different thing about them yeah. that I just like a lot. It was a lot of fun writing them in case you couldn't tell. No, I could tell that. And I guess, was there a lot of fun, not just in the interactions, but also just with with the setting? Because I think Western is just quite a fun 
setting, isn't there? There's lots of opportunities for for hijinks and things going wrong and that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The thing too that I had to kind of think about as well as like, as far as like the Western thing is people are going to expect gunplay, right? And there is, <laughs> yeah. there are a few, a few bits that where you, you do have to shoot or you don't have to shoot, but you are given the opportunity to shoot. Um, but one of your companions just happens to be a sharpshooter. So that's another opportunity to be like, well, why don't you just do it for me? And, you know, one of your companions is a demolitions expert. So it's like, well, instead of shooting all these bad guys, maybe I'll just throw some dynamite at them sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, the both the Western setting and I think that the most fun part of it is the fact that, like, since it's a journey story and it's a travel story, it was mostly like, well, what weird things can can they encounter on the mm. road, right? Like, you know, they meet a traveling group of actors. They meet like a, a creepy old captain who's in a, a former sea captain who's like a hermit in the desert now. And like they meet, you know, a, a, <laughs> a guy who's taking pictures in the woods of weird things. And yeah, it was... <laughs> It's like the weird. It's like the weird stranger encounters with in Red Dead. Yeah, I was gonna say sounds like that. Adventure game content. It's actually funny because I waited a really long time to play Red Dead Two because I didn't want to be influenced in any way. Yeah. And then I played it, and I was like, "Wait a minute! I did that! <laughs> I did that! I did that too!" So I was like, "I guess it's just something about about the setting that that breeds certain ideas." Yeah, totally. But I think it 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 sounds like it's cuz I guess I've not really I've not encountered the sort of vignette element yet cuz I I've just played right. uh, up to the end of at one. W will it sort yeah. of work it like you said you've got main scenes and then is it like you're traveling between those main scenes and and you'll you'll just get a a, a random vignette in between? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's basically as the the second act is the hub area is the interior of the wagon, and so in between uh, encounters okay, and right. scenes and everything, you're on the wagon, and at that point you have like a rest period, and you can you, that's your time to you can chat to the companions, you can pick who you want to chat to, you know, you can get the you get little comments about what you just encountered or if you don't feel like chatting you can like play cards or you can like get jake to tell a story and it takes a long time and <laughs> you pass the time by doing stuff like that and then after a certain amount of of uh turns um because you don't you you can't talk to all of them at once so you kind of have to pick and choose right okay. so after a few Right. So after a few, and then, then that way, that's also avoiding like just running down the list and not having anything to talk about next time. So after a few turns, then the scene kicks in and it's like, oh, Got the you. wagon's slowing down. Oh, okay. Here's the thing. Right. And then, yeah, at the end of every one, you're back on the wagon. So I like that a lot. That's, that sounds really good. Cool. You know, that, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing that, that element oh, of good. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, enjoyed... I... Uh, sorry, go on. Go on, what were you saying? No, you, you were saying earlier about, you know, the, the structure of the game and how much you had played. So Act 1, the, the, the game is basically three and a half acts, yeah. I guess. So Act 1 is basically, you know, the introduction and the inciting incident of going on the treasure hunt and gathering up the rest of the companions and stuff. And then Act Two is the journey, and that's pretty much your time to get to know all the companions and interact yeah. with them and the, the character development. And then Act Three is okay. We we got to where we're going. Now we actually have to find the treasure. And then the second part of the act is like, oh, the big reveal thing. And then yeah. So and then of course there's this isn't too much of a spoiler. But it's a Western, so of course there's a big showdown at the end. Yeah. Like, it, it wouldn't be a Western without a big showdown at the end. So, If you like this video, consider dropping it a like and me a subscribe. It really helps me out. And I guess, like you said, you're still, you've still included action elements because obviously it is a Western, but it still feels, it kind of makes sense in the adventure game context. You're not having to suddenly learn how to brawl and, and shoot and do all those kind of things but it's obviously it, right. it's still there included within the within the game because that's kind of what you'd expect at the time yeah i tried to make them as adventurous as possible like there's a if in the first act of or it's in the demo too like if you if you choose a certain path 
you get involved in a bar brawl scene. Yes. But it, it's I was in that scene. <laughs> yeah. It's a very adventure game puzzle where it's not like you can't just punch to win. You have to like figure out the puzzle to give yourself the upper hand to be able to successfully get out of the bar brawl. And I mean, the, the shooting bits are pretty actiony, but again, like there's, there's alternate more adventure game puzzle ways to get through those scenes because also it's like i tried to make them not incredibly difficult like it mm -hmm. is possible to beat them but i did want to make them challenging because also like realistically you know harley's not a gunsmith you know yeah. she's not really it's kind of weird to be like oh suddenly i'm really good at shooting yeah, when i've yeah. never really indicated that i've ever shot a gun before right so so yeah um I think one of my favorite parts of the bits I played is when you have to get something off a train and you've got mm. various pathways of you can, everyone sort of tells you the the plan they think you should do and then you have to choose which plan. And I don't yes. know, even with that, I was thinking, oh, how is this going to go? And if I choose one, is that, you know, w were there certain pathways you chose where you didn't get what you want or is it is it more just a kind of, you get to decide how it goes down. I wasn't sure how much yeah, choice there was uh, with that. It's, it, I ripped that off of Conquest of the Longbow, incidentally. I love, one of the things I love in Conquest of the Longbow is there's a couple of bits where it's like, yeah, we have we have to formulate a plan and you yeah. have to listen to all of the merry men's plans. Or <laughs> watch is always like, I think we should do this with Borg. <laughs> the plan's always the worst. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, there's a couple of... Um, there's also a couple of instances where that, yeah, you have to pick which approach you want to take. Um, and yeah, the thing is, again, like I didn't want to punish you for making the wrong choice. So at the bare minimum, you achieve the goal that you're okay. after. Like yeah. you're, you're, you're waiting the wagon. I never say that right. You're raiding the wagon because <laughs> you. I was just talking to my composer the other day and I was like, yeah, the, the, the rag and wade music is great. Yeah, anyway. Um, you're raiding a wagon and your goal is to get supplies for the person who asks you to do it. So ultimately you get what you needed, but based on what plan you choose, there are certain ones where like you'll get more stuff or you won't get more stuff. And it doesn't have a, a, a huge outcome on the game itself, but I guess it just makes you like, it's the opportunity to, build the relationship because of with the companions because obviously the companion whose plan you pick will like you more yeah um whose plan did you pick by the way i picked i think was it nadine's it was the one where it was okay. stealth it's i stealth, actually right. didn't i bet you thought i was gonna say erratic or something or like you know i can't remember all the other I, options but i thought you might have picked jake's jake's is fun because it's a it's a dialogue it's a timed dialogue puzzle where you have to like keep up the keep a ruse up oh really oh that's fun though yeah. that there's different it's not just a case of um you know you you see the scene and it happens so there you're yeah. interacting with it and having the to gameplay work. changes yeah if you if you pick jake's plan you have to like you're standing in front of the wagon while the other companions are like going in the back and like <laughs> sneaking stuff out and you're and you have to keep the guards distracted so you have to keep the ruse up and how long you keep up the ruse depends how much stuff you get oh amazing um, okay so like yeah so like if you keep the ruse up completely then jake's like wow that was some great bluffing and he his relationship with you goes up um yeah and if you pick nadine like you have it's like more of a stealthy thing where you have to decide what to take because you only have a certain number of yes. turns before you have to leave and then with phil he's just like well let's just shoot everybody and you yeah. end up like killing everybody so you have all the time in the world but you also like killed a bunch of people so some of the companions are like well that sucks that you killed people so they don't <laughs> like you as much whereas phil's like yeah great we killed everybody <laughs> he's like yeah. So, like, yeah. oh, Phil, <laughs> yeah. thanks for that. Um, I love Phil. I yeah, love Phil, so. no, he is good, he's good fun. <laughs> uh, if anyone's got any other questions, thank you. I've seen a few yeah. people have wish listed it, so thank you for that. Excellent. And thank you. Uh, yeah, if you've got any questions as well, I mean, I won't keep you too much longer, Francisco. Um, I, can, I can talk about this all day, you know, I don't <laughs> care, I'll be here as long as you need me to. But if you want to run and eat a banana, I'm another one. <laughs> 
<laughs> Listen, one a day is enough. That's all that's, all that's needed. <laughs> okay. Don't make this right. into a weird right. thing where you're like, well, if you want to go and have a banana, then fine. <laughs> like, it's not like all I do. <laughs> I'm just going with, I'm just, I love your little pre-stream song, by the way. It's like my favorite part of. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, shout out to the Internet of Things, my mod who made that. Thank you very much. Um, I guess, uh, well, we've, we do have a question actually from Nikki in the chat who said, and this is kind of aside from Rosewater, but obviously still to do with what you do. What would be your top tip for solo devs just starting out? Ooh, yeah, I know, right, cool. right in there. <laughs> My top tip for solo devs are 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 we talking like solo indie devs or solo indie adventure devs specifically? Ooh, I do not know. I'm I'm I guessing. Don't think there's a, yeah, I, I wouldn't say there's a huge difference. No, yeah, really. but um, I would say this is cliche at this point, but start small. Yeah, yeah. Don't make a game like Rosewater. Um, I only made made Rosewater because I've made several other games i've been doing this for a very long time and so i feel like i have the experience to do it even with that experience rosewater has still been a very overwhelming project so if you want to get started i would say do stuff like the upcoming jam work and if you can get you just finished, you just froze it, there but i'm guessing you said adventure game jam or <laughs> i did yeah sorry yes no, i said no, no, Participate in things like the upcoming Adventure Jam because that will give you uh, an idea of how you work and how you organize yourself. And it will teach you the most important skill, which is being able to finish projects. Because I've known way too many people who start a project and then halfway through they're like, oh, let me do this. And then they never finish anything. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Um, but if you're asking about, like, how do I get noticed? That's I still don't know. Come on, come on podcasts like this one. <laughs> That's how you get noticed. Make friends with Laura and other journalists. Oh, that won't do you any good. <laughs> Sorry, Francisco. <laughs> hey, you know, you've talked to some amazing people and I'm honored to be rubbing shoulders with oh, them. Oh, stop so, it, yeah. for goodness sakes. And you, you stop it. Okay, fine. <laughs> no, no, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Please keep doing it. Um, you're, you're an important resource and person in our community that. And it, yeah it's very appreciated that you take the time to talk to people like me and them and keep the popularity going well i only do it because i like it because <laughs> i like well, your games and i like you so that's why well thanks oh this is getting into a bit of a love fest isn't it <laughs> um you're mentioning uh... <laughs> You're mentioning the uh, y your composer, so I guess yeah. we should mention a bit about the the music of Rosewater because yeah. it's obviously it's got that yeah. kind of Western sort of twang style, but I think it still it still works as a kind of adventure gamey kind of thing as well. If that if that does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was uh, so the music um, we decided to take a less is more approach with this project. Yeah, because I feel like a lot of the heavy lifting in a Western is just like the environment and the ambience. So I didn't want to have like the music in your face all the time, just looping all the time. Like in Lamplight City, you know, you'd go to a different location and you'd have location specific tunes. And like when you were in more generic areas, there was like three or four tunes that would cycle jukebox style, like randomly. And um, so I was like, well, that doesn't really, I feel like more of a, a, again, not to bring up Red Dead again, but like the way that Red Dead handled its music, it was like there was there was different music based on what area you were in, but it would also play intermittently. So there'd be these huge gaps of silence. And so that's what I'm, what I wanted to do as well. So like, you know, there's certain areas like the town of Rosewater or like the desert outskirts or like later on when you're in the city, where there's like, you know, 15, 20, 30 second tracks that play in a randomized order to just kind of give that mood. And there's certain situations like the bar fight and the wagon raid. And look, I said it right that time. Uh, and that where they, they have like, you know, the maybe the scene is more urgent. So obviously the music needs to be there. But yeah, it's it's not like it's in your face all the time. So I think it's more mellow, but it's also great. And I'm really looking forward. Like we're 
he's kind of, you know, we're, he's got a little fire under his butt right now because we're getting close to, to needing to have it finished. So he's like really ramping up production and I'm really looking forward to hearing some of the tracks with the live instruments that we're planning on doing. So that'll be nice. I think it'll sound really good. Um, we, we've got a question as well from Teresno Entertainment who asks, what do you think about all these add-ons to adventure games like Hotspot, Revealer, Objectives List, In-Game Hints? I mean, we should say that the game has a, a journal that you can go to, which, which kind mm -hmm. of that gets up updated with everything you hear from people. And some of the, sometimes you do have to go to that journal to find, you know, maybe discover a bit of a, a clue for a puzzle. Or that's what I kind of found when I was playing. Yes. So it's got some elements like that. And I think it does have a hotspot highlighter. I can't, can't it does, yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I think that they're fine. In fact, I think that they're, pretty much what's expected now mm, because yes. people have very short attention spans and people can't you can't expect people to sit there and play an adventure game in one sitting so things like an objectives list help both help remind people when they come back to the game what they're supposed to be doing or if you want to even go the extra mile like return to monkey island did and have like a little recap when you load a game that was great but also, I think one of the biggest frustrations that people have with adventure games is when you don't know what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, and the game completely. Doesn't do such a great job, yeah, of of indicating what your goal is. So having that reinforce, or even if you know, you're playing and like they say you should do this, and like someone was calling you and you didn't hear it, and there's no way to repeat the dialogue. Oh like, yeah, yeah. You know, there there should be always an indication of what you should be doing and whether that's in an objective list or a diary or whatever, I think that's really important. And same with hotspot highlighters. I mean, I know that there's always the debate about pixel hunting. I don't think pixel hunting is a great thing. And I know that a lot of people don't like hotspot highlighters because they feel like it's cheating and people rely on it as a crutch, but, but then I don't you know. don't have I to do like... it. <laughs> then yeah, don't use it, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I don't know. It's I understand it. I don't feel like it's such an issue with a higher resolution game because, like, obviously Rosewater's 720p, so it's it's crisper. So mm. you can hopefully distinguish things better than say like yeah. when we did Shark Light, which was had these great detailed backgrounds that Ben Chandler did, but a lot of the times it was really hard to tell what was important because it was like so detailed, and you couldn't do a hotspot for everything. Um, that game could have benefited from a hotspot highlighter, but alas, hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like those things are they're they're necessary, and like accessibility things too. Like I've I've been conscious of putting in accessibility mm. things, like for example, uh, toggle for like whether the dialogue advances automatically or if you have to click to advance for people who maybe are slower to read or they want to make sure that they get everything. Um, you know stuff like the the timers there's a there's a i tried to be uh sparing with with timed dialogues and you're never punished for them but there's also an option for if you feel like choice paralysis there's an option to extend the dialogue timers and i think ultimately people should have fun playing adventure games so anything you can do to make them fun and not frustrating is not, is is a good thing in my book I mean, I and I think I found that with with Rosewater, there wasn't ever a puzzle where I was like for ages being like, oh, what am I supposed to do here? You know, it might have taken me a moment to go around and speak to everybody or make sure I'd seen everything, but I was never in that state where I was like, I just I'm stumped, and that wasn't a case of anything being too easy. But I just think it wasn't. Yeah, there was nothing where I I felt really unsure of where I was supposed to go next or what I was supposed to do. That's good. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, just the the nature of the game itself, like it's it's an adventure story. So like you're constantly moving. So I don't want to kill the pacing by just being like, well, now I'm stuck and I don't know yeah. what to do. So, you know, so, um, uh, the ideal is like, oh well, I'm in this new area. Let me explore and find out what to do. And as you go, as you explore the new area, you're like, oh okay, now I know where to go and what to do. And then you have a think, and then you do it, and then next thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which which works. I thought that worked really well. Um, oh, um, do you have any information, um, Nikki asked in the chat, about the included accessibility 
um, just to forward on on to people who might be interested? Uh, I mean, I I, I can tell Could you what's in. yeah. Oh, just say yeah, yeah. So there's the dialogue advancing thing. There's the extended timers. Um, I don't know if this is just accessibility, if it really counts as accessibility or if it's more convenience, but you can toggle the alerts for when the game auto saves or when the diary gets updated. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, the text also has a, a toggleable backdrop so that it's easier to read. Um, and I believe that's it so far. I'm always open to suggestions. Um, I, I can, I'll, I'll implement as much as I can, but yeah, I'm not the greatest course. coder. And AGS is also kind of creaky sometimes. But any, I've gotten some great suggestions from people like the, I haven't completely implemented it yet, so you maybe wouldn't have seen it. But um, in addition to the double click to exit, I've just made double click while you're walking, just skip the walking. So yes, just, I noticed that, yeah. to things. Um, and uh, I still have to, someone also said that the, the highlight around the inventory was a little hard to see. So I'm in the process of, I have to go back and like do a, an extra thick line for that. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, oh, lots of folk that need the options struggle to find the information. So maybe one for the Steam page. Uh, yeah, I guess I could list accessibility features on the Steam page. That would be a good idea. Um, but yeah, it's 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 there on the on the main on the settings menu. Yeah. Hopefully, it's easy to find. Um, I mean, I I sort of know the specific answer to this, but when when are you looking to to release this? Oh, <laughs> look at me. Look, oh, someone oh. told me to release it. <laughs> well, in case you're like, well, I've already told well, you not this. Tell you. Because no, <laughs> you're like, well, Laura, I told you this, like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so. Um, well, I don't want to say the specific release date because mm. there are still many things up in the air. Uh, my, the, I'm looking at a release window of late 2023. Nice. Looking forward to that. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else you want to, you want to mention or talk about? Um, I, I, I very much look forward to the full, um, to the full release. Yeah, thank you. Um, I no, I think that's everything. I'm, I'm hopefully we'll have a new trailer out uh, around oh, great. June or July. Um, I've been meaning to do that, and now that I have more voice acting and actual animations and new things to show off, I can do that. Um, yeah, uh, if people are interested in the behind the scenes, I do a weekly dev stream every Wednesday at one p.m. Eastern on my Twitch channel. That's Twitch.tv/Grundislav. It's called Wild West Wednesdays, and you can come watch me animate or draw backgrounds or whatever. Uh, and yeah, just uh, wish list the game, tell people about it, play the demo. Word of mouth is like 99% of, of stuff for indie adventure devs. So if you're excited about Rosewater, go on social media and be like, oh boy, Rosewater. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's about it, really. Lovely stuff. Uh, we we do actually ask uh, a lot of people on here what their favorite chocolate bar is. So perhaps you'd like to finish with that. Uh, does it have to be a bar? No, I guess favorite chocolate, actually, we should say, okay. not bar. My favorite chocolate are dark chocolate peanut butter cups from Trader Joe's. Oh, that sounds But if those good. aren't available, as they haven't been because I haven't been to Trader Joe's, a good old Reese's peanut butter cup will do. Oof. Yeah, that's good. That's a good choice. I, I like that. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much, Francisco. Really, really thank looking you. forward What's to Rosewater. What's your favorite chocolate, chocolate bar? Good question. Uh, <laughs> I really like, a, I like a Kinder Bueno and I like a Ritter Sport. I like the salted, honey salted almond Ritter Sport. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. So give that I've a go. I've never heard of that. Next time I'm over in, in the UK, yeah, if you can get those in the UK? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. well, Seems like I've just, I'm just noticed. Have I just chosen like lots of German chocolate? I don't know what that's about, but yeah. <laughs> um, good you know what we should do? We should have a chocolate exchange. Yes. Yes. Let's do that. Because we don't have Trader Joe's. So. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring all the crappy American chocolate, and then oh. you can be like, "Ours oh. is so much better here," and I'll be like, "Yeah." yeah. 
actually <laughs> now that you've said that i'm starting to, i don't know if there's actually much chocolate from america i actually want but yeah do you think you have you do you think you're going to be coming over for adventure x then i mean i, I oh, know absolutely. You, yeah, yeah all good yeah, good i'll be there excellent. with bells on excellent brilliant well looking forward to it looking forward to your talk which you said you got in in two weeks time did you say yes Yes, it is June eleventh. I believe it's at one thirty p.m. Eastern. Okay, and uh, it's going to be yeah. It's Nariscope will be streaming, so I'll tweet all the links and things. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you very much. Right. Um, well, thank I'll, you very much. I'll put all the links and everything below. But um, awesome. yeah, enjoy. It, it sounds like it, 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 you. <laughs> I never know how to end these things. But... <laughs> yeah, no, love the game and looking forward to the full version. It's going to be great. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed. I did. All right. All right. I'm going to say bye now. Bye. bye.